episode 109, P.D. Aliva. Welcome, everybody, to The Realm. I'm J.V. Hilliard. Today, I have a very special guest, a fellow author, P.D. Aliva. And P.D. is a sci-fi fantasy author that mixes both horror novels with sci-fi fantasy. And if you're a fan of vampires or you're a fan of aliens, you're going to love The Rose or Volume 2 of The Rose. And I ask him a little later in the interview who his favorite alien is, and I think it's going to catch you a little off guard. So stay tuned for his answer. And now here's my interview with P.D. Oliva. Welcome, P.D., to The Realm. Nice. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Well, hey, you know, I have to ask you a question because right out of the gate, you had me at vampire. I consume everything related to vampires, whether it's the gothic, whether it's the cheesy Buffy the Vampire yeah. Slayer stuff. Uh, and then you throw in this about alien vampires, and I find it uh, really attractive because the genres that you're mixing, uh, both fantasy, sci-fi, and sort of this horror stuff uh, in a dystopian realm is pretty cool and pretty unique. How did you come up with the idea to mix these two? And how have you found the response from readers? So reader response has been fantastic. People are enjoying the books, especially the first one is very action packed. It's fast paced. It moves. And then volume two is where all that depth comes in, all that character development. So people are, readers are loving the book. So very excited about that. How did the idea come? Woo! We're going to start with a four-year-old boy watching a show called Buck Rogers in the 25th century, right? Do you remember it? With Tweaky, man. My favorite. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And it, one of those episodes has a space vampire in it, and he looks so grotesque and nasty. I remember I was like four years old watching this show, scared to death of this space <laughs> vampire, and he stayed with me for the rest of my life. So that's where the space vampires and alien vampires came from. When I read the, the first Rose novel, I immediately thought graphic novel. Have you been influenced by the comics? I grew up on comic books. So Pulp Fiction magazines as well. You know, mm -hmm. it's very pulpy. You know, it has that feel to it as well. And I do plan, I want to put it into a graphic novel. And also, I really want to turn it into a game. Do you mean more. role playing or do you mean board or like, what are you thinking? Video game. Video you know, game. Yeah. Put it on the PS4, you know, keep going. You know, alien vampires, martial arts. You could choose to be an alien vampire or maybe one of the gray aliens, you know, using telekinesis to tear apart bodies. That would be really cool. Yeah. Very interested in doing that. Do you find it easier to write in a series like this or do you find it easier to write sort of standalone novels? I, When I interview authors, I get a different response all the time. Some like a, the finality of an ending uh, but it also sounds like you've spent a lot of time building this world and it's hard to end it with a single novel. I mean, do you have a preference or what do you find easier to do? I love writing the series, but I do love writing standalones more. <laughs> right. I yeah. do. I do. Yeah. But I kind of look at every book in the series as a standalone. It has to have its own, you know, its own uniqueness to it. But with The Rose, since there's also going to be another series after this, plus a third series, I know where everything is going because it comes into my head. Like that's the first thing I see is like that ending and it always starts with like an emotion or a theme I want to elicit and that ending is there. You know, how does that emotional impact at the end of the story going to, you know, channel through to the reader? That's what I'm looking for. And then from there, from the beginning, yeah, you know, I'll get plot points here and plot points there and characters and stuff. For the most part, I know where the beginning is and I know where the end is. And in the middle, I'm just like having fun. Right. Yeah. You know, I, and I write series all the time. I'm a lot like you where I have the, everything kind of planned out ahead of time and I'm writing backwards to forward. So I start at the end and write to, to, to the beginning yeah. and, and sounds to me like you and I have the same kind of writing patterns when it comes to that. But here's a little bit of an unfair question I'm going to throw at you. You might not even have an answer for it, but when you, I hear sci-fi fantasy and then I hear horror you know, which do you have a favorite? Like if you had to choose only one to write in for the rest of your life, tell me which one you would choose and why. Whew. That is definitely a loaded question. A little bit unfair. <laughs> Sorry, but man. I would see historically, if you look back at um, other books that I've written, books that I love to read, I would say definitely in the horror genre is yeah. what I would choose. If I could only choose one to write in for the rest of my life, I would choose horror. All right. So that begs the next question then. I was going to ask you, 
what who your favorite vampire was now i know you've got inspiration from the buck rogers vampire but did you find inspiration elsewhere or was it just from that that uh, that episode i love vampire novels love vampire stories so they're all out there uh ironically blade was a huge influence in yeah. this in writing this novel because they, it's so action-packed right mm. as far as like what do I prefer in my vampires? I like interview with the vampire type of vampires. You know, I oh, love yeah. my Dracula. I love even the um, J.D. Barker, Doc Ray Stoker did yeah. a prequel to Dracula called Dracul. I, I read it. Okay. It had the greatest cover too, man. It was like that yeah. crimson red with the black carriage on the yes. front. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was fantastic. They really nailed it. But definitely that classic gothic type of vampires is what I'm going for. So here's a, another kind of curveball question for you. Sticking with the Rose, because I know there's plenty of characters in it, but if you had to go on a lunch with one of your characters there, who would it be and why? In the Rose? Yes. Ooh. Either volume. Either volume. Sonos. I love Sonos. And why is you that? Come on. He's um he's diabolical. He's <laughs> he's like the the epitome of being the, the classic villain or the classic type of like common, manipulative, anarchic. Not only does he hate his enemy, he hates his own kind as well. He just wants yeah. to see the entire world burn. Cool. Well, we're about to wrap this up. We're almost at the end of our time, but I do this with all of our guests. I play a lightning yeah. round oh. and I'm going to fire six or seven questions at you. I'm going to start mind. this out because I was waiting for this question for the last 20 minutes. Dracula versus Lestat and why? Dracula. Definitely Dracula. He's um, he's the iconic. He's the he's the the classic. You know, he's he's not the first vampire, but he's the iconic vampire. And not only that, the change of the elements. How uh, Dracula could change. You know, he could turn into fog. He could turn into a wolf. Lestat can't do that. You know? Right. But I All do right. love Lestat as well. So, um, since this is a alien vampire novel, mm -hmm. who is your favorite alien of all time? Favorite alien of all time. Let me see. <laughs> For some reason, E.T. keeps popping in my head, but it's definitely not E.T. Hey, that's sure what lightning rounds ET, are for, right? man. You know, Sometimes E.T. is it. Maybe because I watched it a couple of days ago with my kids for the first time. <laughs> it's possible, right? Yeah, good. That's all right. We'll take E.T. It's, it's all right. It was. I didn't expect that one, but that's okay. All right. So I think I already know the answer to this question. Vampire Diaries versus Twilight. Diaries. Yeah. 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 So, all right. So I'm with Just you on that one. Can't get too. over the whole sparkly thing. <laughs> I, I'm the same way. All right. So, to roll back to this whole dystopian uh, idea that you've got, yep. what's your favorite dystopian novel? I Am Legend. Oh, great. Great pick. Fantastic. That is love a it. fantastic pick. And there's great. a vampire play there, too, I would say. So, there I love is. That. You know, yep. there is. They're vampires in the novel. You know, they're not zombies. They're not like vampire zombie hybrids. They're like vampires. You yeah. Know? And it's such a classic novel. All right. Final question staying on the dystopian realm okay. Ready Player One novels versus Hunger Game novels. Ready Player One. Oh, yeah, I like Ready Player One. Look, you've survived the lightning round. Some of those nice. were kind of, I love throwing you know curveballs at people. So I'm glad you answered those. Thank That's you very great. much for being on the realm today, my friend. And for those who haven't read P.D. Oliva's stuff, go out and get The Rose. Go out and get The Rose Volume 2. Check out his stuff that's coming in 2023. And thank you very much for being on the realm. Uh, thank you for having me. Good my time. My pleasure, sir. Time. Yeah, thank you, sir. I mean, I'll tell you, P.D. Oliva is a great interview. This guy's done something pretty unique in combining sci-fi fantasy and fans like me with the horror genre and smashing things together like aliens and vampires. I do the same in The Last Keeper with both epic and dark fantasy. I think that's also somewhat unique in that realm. So if you haven't had a chance to pick up your, your uh, copy of The Last Keeper, please do at jvhilliard.com or go to dragonmoonpress.com. I'm JV Hilliard. Thank you for visiting the realm and may your gods go with you.